Now, if you didn't know, I am a massive fan of Marvel, and although lately their films haven't been all that, one standout is Spider-Man No Way Home. And even though the film came out, damn, has it really been that long? Lego has only just given us a decent model for it, with mine still in the works. But one thing I vowed for my set was to have the best minifigures out on display so the scene could be depicted properly. And if you want to see a full breakdown of those figures and the reasons I bought them, make sure you hit that subscribe button to Tommy C. Figs. But after seeing Doc Ock in the new Liberty Battle set, I knew the grey coat just wasn't going to be it. And that leads me to what's wrong with this figure. Now I've said extensively about all the problems with this set, but ironically this figure got the most detail put into it and I still think it's one of the worst. So why is that? Well firstly, I think the face print is actually pretty good. I know I just put out a video about why face prints suck, but most of the time you'll find that the hairpiece actually contributes to the likeness of an actor or actress we see on screen. And in this case, unfortunately, they've just used the wrong one. I definitely think the Harry Potter hairpiece should have been used in this situation, recolored in dark brown. Plus I think these arms are a great throwback to 2004, but unfortunately not what I'm looking for on a display set these days. But hell, maybe that's something we can tackle in a mods video. For now, I want to focus on the figure itself. Now there are a few custom companies tackling No Way Home Doc Ock, but the one I want to show off today is this one by Phoenix Customs. And let's start immediately with a comparison. Yes, the Lego figure is going to be less detailed, this is a custom figure, but what I want to start with is the head directly. Although I think the Lego one is a fantastic representation of Alpha Bellina, I think the custom one just looks more accurate. Both minifigures feature the exact same facial expressions, but the Phoenix one goes the extra mile in giving a subtle smile as opposed to a grin, and gives the glasses the correct tint as they are green in the film. Not to mention the way more accurate hairpiece. But let's talk about the elephant in the room. Those arms and the coat. Now the reason this figure caught my interest is because I'm trying to get a custom version of every single No Way Home minifigure, as the Statue of Liberty project has finally begun construction, and when showing off this model I wanted every single figure to be the best that can possibly be. And unlike my last video where I can kind of justify the 3D moulds because LEGO have done a similar thing in the past, adding 3D moulded clothing has never really been a thing unless you're talking about a set of very specific examples. I mean, in this case it's fairly obvious why, the posability in the legs is virtually non-existent anymore, but honestly I never see myself sitting this figure down anywhere, but can 100% see LEGO's reasoning for not doing something like this. And those arms coming directly out the back of the coat with no stud attachments and completely 3D moulded is not even something that I like very much. Now don't get me wrong, I really do like the design and I do think they fit into that Lego feel, but do really limit the customization of this figure. And as I've made a really nice set of Doc Ock claws, using normal Lego elements, I would have really liked to be able to include them on this figure, which unfortunately just isn't possible in any way. But other than that, I honestly really like the way it looks with the coat. The really clever way it connects to the minifigure doesn't make the coat ridiculously bulky, but still adds that extra bit of detail that the big heavy trench coat would add to a minifigure like this. I know purists are going to be 100% against the way that this minifigure looks, and it's for obvious reason, but honestly, I think it looks really good. And would love to see Lego kind of go in this more molded plastic direction, as opposed to cloth karmas or capes. They did a very similar thing with the Doctor Strange minifigure, where they gave him a molded cape instead of a cloth one, and I honestly love this in comparison to that cloth one, but I even know some people that say this is too far in giving minifigures custom molded accessories. One common comment I get around here is why don't I actually just buy action figures like Hot Toys or Marvel Legends, as one I'm spending so much money on these custom figures, and they look frankly very different to traditional LEGO minifigures. And the reason that kind of took me from purist to customs is that with CMFs becoming such a prominent thing in the LEGO space, where you get a minifigure and a bunch of accessories, it's kind of like buying an action figure. One difference being that you can custom create environments for those minifigures to inhabit, really emphasizing that fun and creativity, and that's exactly why I love LEGO, to build really cool vehicles and environments for my minifigures to inhabit and create a really awesome display. And if you ask me, customs aren't doing anything to limit that creativity, they're just giving us more accurate versions of beloved characters to help our displays come to life. And although yes, there are cheaper options out there like UV printing, personally, as I like to display my customs with my official figures, I want the customs to be made in the exact same way LEGO makes them, with the same quality plastics and traditional printing methods. But unfortunately, that comes at a premium price. And I'll admit, customs aren't for everyone, but because they're not a massive company, they can put the extra time and resources into getting every single detail correct, even if it's inspired by LEGO style and not directly LEGO style. And although some minifigures I would say would be hard to display next to other non-custom minifigures, believe it or not, figures like this can actually fit really nicely in with traditional LEGO minifigures. And I think so long as you can display them next to the official LEGO counterpart, then the custom is doing a good enough job in my book. Everybody's opinions on customs will be subjective. I see some people fully against it, I see some people open to it. But believe it or not, if LEGO has the time and budget, they'll just do this anyway and they'll make custom molded pieces for their minifigures. Especially if their character requires a custom piece. And if you want to know what I mean by that, you should click this video on screen now.